since I recorded two videos for you that don't have sound here, I'm going to try this again. Um, this is atomic structure. Okay, so this is just a way to picture the atom. Um, the atom has a nucleus in the center and the um, rings, the orbits on the outside. This is really the Bohr model of the atom, and we know that there's a more updated version, the um, wave mechanical model, but for when you picture what an atom looks like, you can really use the Bohr model as a good um, visual for it. It's really hard to kind of understand that electron cloud model with all of the orbitals, etc. Okay, so this is how I would suggest you picture the atom. There are different parts of the atom. There's protons, neutrons, and electrons. Okay, electrons are negatively charged. Neutrons have no charge. That means they're neutral, and protons are positive. Protons and neutrons are found in the nucleus. Remember, the nucleus is super tiny, but it's super dense. That's where all the mass of the atom is. And the electrons are buzzing around the outside. They're not really found in the orbits that we draw here. They're definitely more in a cloud formation. However, um, we'll draw them like this. Protons are positively charged. That means the nucleus, the whole nucleus, is positively charged, and electrons are negatively charged. So the positive part of the atom is the center, and the negative part of the atom is buzzing around the outside. Remember that the nucleus is positively charged, because the only thing in there that's charged is protons. The nucleus is also the source of the mass of the atom. We assume electrons have no mass, okay? Protons weigh 1 AMU, and neutrons weigh 1 AMU. So, the mass of the atom is found in the nucleus. One thing that you absolutely need to remember is how to figure out the difference between, uh, is the how to figure out the mass number. Let's talk about a few other characteristics of the atom. First of all, atomic number, which I just wrote on the board. Atomic number is the number of protons, that's it. It identifies the atom. If you have seven protons, you're nitrogen. If you add a proton, you become a different atom. So it's really important to know that the atomic number is the same as the number of protons, and that is what identifies the atom. The atomic number, the number of protons, is uh, found easily on your reference table using the key, okay? Um, and it's the big bold number in the bottom left corner. Atomic number and number of protons are the same as the nuclear charge. The nuclear charge has nothing to do with your oxidation state. This may pop up again. Uh -huh. It has nothing to do with your oxidation state, but the number in the top right corner, all it has to do is with is the, uh, there we go, all it has to do with is the charge in the nucleus. If you look at the nucleus here, what is in there that's charged? Protons only. Okay, so nuclear charge is the same as atomic number, and that is very, very commonly um, mistaken, okay, this is very common. Nuclear charge has nothing to do with these oxidation states I'm drawing there. That is the how many electrons this atom tends to gain or lose when it decides to become a compound, when it bonds, all right? That is not the nuclear charge. The nuclear charge is way easier. It's just the atomic number. So the nuclear charge on any carbon atom is six. No matter what, doesn't matter if it's bonded, if it's diamond, if it's a graphite, okay? The mass number of an atom, for example, chlorine, the mass number of chlorine is written in the upper left-hand corner in the isotopic notation. We have chlorine H35. Chlorine is always number 17 because that's what identifies it as chlorine. The mass number is the top number. It's 35 in this case. It is also equal to the number of protons plus neutrons. That is something you need to have memorized. It's not on your reference table. It's something that you need to know. Protons plus neutrons, okay? So what we're saying here is that the mass number of chlorine, 35, equals 17. That's the number of protons, so it's an atomic number, plus the number of neutrons. So this version, this isotope, this isotope of chlorine has 18 neutrons in its nucleus, okay? That's just 35 minus 17. Um, there's 18 neutrons in its nucleus. You can have other flavors of chlorine. You could have chlorine 37. If you had chlorine 37, you still have 17 protons because that atomic number does not change. 
but you still have 17 protons. But your mass number is now 37. So what actually changes from isotope to isotope is the number of neutrons. Okay? If we do the math here, we no longer have 18 neutrons. We have 20. So one version of chlorine has 18 neutrons in the nucleus. Another one has 20. Some things have multiple isotopes. Some things do not. Okay? Uh, some things have more than one. Some things have 20. Some things have one. Okay? That's where the average atomic mass on your periodic table comes from. So the average atomic mass is the um, sum of all those weighted isotopes. We will get there. That's going to be our next slide. All right. Let's take this isotope, for example, um, nitrogen 14. Okay. I'm going to use I'm going to use delta. That triangle needs delta. If I change the number of neutrons in this nitrogen isotope, I get a different isotope of nitrogen. If I add a neutron, it becomes nitrogen 15. If I take a neutron away, it becomes nitrogen 13. Okay? Uh, so changing the number of neutrons just changes the isotope. It could change the stability, as we know from nuclear chemistry. Proton-neutron ratio is what determines the stability. Okay? Uh, if I change the number of electrons, it does not, I do not have an isotope, but I have an ion. Okay? That means my positives and my negatives no longer cancel each other out. They are no longer equal. Remember that in a neutral atom, atoms are all neutral, uh, my number of protons equals my number of electrons. But if I change that number of electrons, remember they're on the outside, they are easy to gain or lose. Uh, they can easily get lost. You end up with an ion. So if I'm starting with this nitrogen 14, I normally have seven protons in it. Okay. In this case, I'm going to... Um, gain an electron, I believe, yes, I'm going to gain an electron, and I become nitrogen minus one. I gained an electron. If I lose an electron, that means I'm taking away a negative, so instead of seven negatives, I only have six, I'm going to become nitrogen 14 plus one. That means I'm going to have a charge of positive one because I lost an electron. This could be a little bit counterintuitive. Remember that electrons are negative. So if you lose a negative, I have extra protons. If I change the number of protons, I'm also I'm not only going to be changing my charge, but most importantly, I'm going to have a whole brand new element. Okay? Whole new element. What that means is that if I take, and if I add a, um, if I add a proton to nitrogen 14, it becomes oxygen. Okay? It becomes oxygen. Remember, you're adding mass, you're adding charge, but the big thing that you take away here is if you change protons, you are really changing the element. Seven goes with the symbol N, goes with nitrogen. If you add a proton, it means it becomes oxygen. Okay? Sure, it's going to have a positive charge. Sure, it's going to gain a mass, but what really matters is that you're changing the whole element, okay? If I take a proton away from nitrogen-14, it becomes carbon, okay? It becomes carbon-13. Remember, protons have mass, too. Protons plus neutrons give me my uh, mass number, which is that number that's on top, okay? The number on the bottom is my atomic number or my nuclear charge. Last thing is the average atomic mass. The average atomic mass is the decimal that's in the upper left-hand corner on your periodic table. Okay, It is a decimal for all of them. If you round it to the nearest whole number, you get the most abundant isotope. Okay, So for carbon, it's 12.011. Remember, we have that it's the mass number is protons plus neutrons. You don't have 0 0.011 of a proton or a neutron. So this is the weighted average of all the naturally occurring isotopes, okay? All of the naturally occurring ones, you weight them and figure out their average. Just like I figure out your average in my classroom, okay? Tests are weighted more. Your average is going to probably be more likely to be closer to your test average than it is to be your lab average because tests are weighted more. So here's an example of how to find average atomic mass. Let's use chlorine. The naturally occurring isotopes of chlorine are chlorine-35 and chlorine-37. It is 75% approximately chlorine-35 and 25% chlorine-37. So to figure out the average atomic mass, I'm going to figure out the weighted average. 
The formula is abundance times mass, which I just circled. Those are the mass numbers, 35 and 37, plus abundance times mass. We need to put the abundance in the um, decimal. So if you're going from percent to a decimal, you need to divide by 100, um, and you can get 0.75 and 0.25. Now, just looking at this data, if they say that the 35% is weighted way more than the 25%, right? So 75 the 35 is weighted more than the 37. So I expect my answer to be closer to 35 because it's it's heavier weighted. Okay, this is your formula. This is another one that's not on your reference table that you need to memorize. If there's more than two isotopes, you just keep going, keep adding abundance times mass plus abundance times mass, et cetera. When I plug it in, I have 0.75, which is my abundance of the first one times the mass of the first one, which is 35 plus 0.25 times the mass of the second one, which is 37. If you plug that into your calculator, make sure you're adding and not just multiplying all of them together. Um, you should end up with about 35.5 AMUs. Okay, that is your formula, 35.5 AMUs. If you were to um, look at your periodic table, that's a great way to check your work. It should be really, really close to that. Your periodic table, I think, says um, says 35.453. That's how you can check it.